Cote, our writer, and one of our co-directors. Saida, we recognize her. Laura, our also co-director. And then we have Ken, our other star actor. So we've got two microphones, so we're gonna kind of share, we'll pass them along and do that kind of thing. Um, just to kick this off, I would really love to hear from Jose and Lara. What was, oh, oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're back, maybe not. We'll try that one. We're really gonna pass them. Um, I would just love to hear the inspiration for how you came upon this story. Okay. Uh, we are a couple, we live together. Um, when you live as a couple, uh, there's a time in your life when you turn about 30, that everyone around you start asking the question, why are the kids coming? Why are you gonna have children? And um, well, we had that thoughts about it. And every time we explained to the people, it was like exhausting. Uh, it, it, it took a long time. So we decided to make a movie to answer the question. So, now, after, after we made the movie, nobody asked us anymore. <laughs> Where are the kids coming? So, the, the point was made. So, I don't know if she wants to say anything. She doesn't speak English, so we'll have to translate. That's it. She said he explained perfectly, so she doesn't need to say it. Okay, so from the moment that you had the idea, how long did it take you to even encapsulate the script? Well, it, it took a while because um, I, had, I, I had in mind the beginning, and I had a very, 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 very clearly uh, in my mind the end. Uh, the problem was to the journey from from the, the beginning to the end. Um, we work together a lot. I write and she corrects it. She tells me, "Oh, well, you know, we're a couple. You know what I mean?" And <laughs> and actually, the, the the writer, but she's the uh, what, is, what is called the script editor, uh, script supervisor. So uh, we 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 agree in what we wanted to, to tell, but not in how we wanted to tell it. So the, the journey until the script was finished, it was long and hard, because we had to agree in, in, in every point and everything, in every scene, and, um, everything was, uh, we, we need to be very, very, very specific in what we, we, we wanted to tell, because we were, we were going to direct together, and we, we couldn't disagree in a, in a set say something and she said the opposite. So we had to agree. And that happened in the, in the processing of the, uh, of the writing. Then to direct, it was easier because we discussed everything we, we needed to, to discuss. Um, what were some of the things each of you fought for to keep in the script? Oh. Uh, me, myself, she? Both. Both. This is very exciting. Okay. I like this. It's a negotiation we're seeing between two co-directors and a couple at this moment, right here, right now. And this is the way we wrote the script. <laughs> well, the ending, the ending. Uh, well, I had to remember, but now I remember that we had a lot, a lot of uh, discussions about the the scene in between the end credits. Should we put it? Should should we put it that way? Did, did it show what we wanted to show? Did it work the, one, the way we wanted? So we discussed a lot. Of course, it was, uh, there were many versions of, uh, of the movie without the scene. But we finally agreed that we needed that scene because we wanted the, the audience to see her again pregnant and go, oh my God, again? Because I, I thought, uh, we thought that it was uh, important. Y también tuvimos una negociación sobre cuánto podríamos llegar a desesperar al espectador o hasta cuánto podíamos eh, tirar de la paciencia de ellos, porque hay secuencias, eh, bueno, la película está llena de, de silencio en los que 
pasan cosas, pero todo va bastante lento y no sabíamos hasta qué punto el espectador eh, aguantaría tanto tiempo, tantas esperas y, y era una lucha siempre entre nosotros dos, Ortuño cada vez quería tirar más y hacer que el espectador aguantara más y yo cada vez tenía más miedo y quería que acortáramos esas esperas. They had to negotiate a little bit on the rhythm of, the, of some of the scenes. Um, there's a lot of silences, uh, especially at the beginning when I meet Ida, when Ida meets me, um, and they had to negotiate on how long they could let the, the, the final sequence, how do you say that, the, the uh, shot the go on, shot. the sequence shot go on without having to cut anything. Um, and Ortuño wanted to leave it as long as he could, and she, kind of wanted it to go a little bit quicker on some of the scenes, mm -hmm. so they had to negotiate both the directors on, mm -hmm. uh, on deciding how long to let some of those scenes go on for. Um, I'm gonna jump over to our actors now, and I'd love to hear a little bit about how both of you found your characters. How did you create these characters? Because they're very specific, they're heightened and fantastical. So could you talk a little bit about that process? Well, the character has a lot of myself, but it took me quite a while to find out what I could use of myself for the character. Um, it took us two months to prepare ourselves for the shootings, and we did a lot of rehearsals. In the beginning, I always put too much energy or too less into the character because I had to find the point that the character would need to express itself and due to budget constraints we only had 10 to 12 days to shoot the, the film so um, we spent about two months uh, two months rehearsing um, you know the, the script and honestly in the script it was only like 30 pages of the script 30 to 40 pages so it was quite short um, and I, when you're reading the script, I, I didn't know that there were so many, so it was, you know, kind of a silent movie in a lot of the scenes. Um, and so through the re rehearsal process, you know, I, I didn't know Ida beforehand either. Um, and so the chemistry between the two of us, thank God, it worked so well. Um, Ida was so strange, and honestly, my job was more... <laughs> My job was more responding to her and, you know, going into her world, it was her universe more than anything, it was her house, um, and going into that universe and uh, playing off of her, you know, and she gave me some strange food and I went, what the hell is this, you know? Um, you know, my character's the same thing, I mean, I work creating sneezes and how the chalks are great and, you know, the script let, let, lends itself, when you read the script, you say, well, these two characters are... They never leave their houses. They're, you know, they write these letters. You know, you know, we have the iPhones nowadays that we use the chat and everything else. And in this world, it was, you know, a reflection of that was the typewriter, um, and it just basically the script and the fact that her name is she and my name is he. Um, it, it was, it was just fun to enter into that world and just play off of that. It was very theatrical. So um, it's also funny because um, as she didn't. She wasn't used to speak, she was scared of speaking, and somehow it happens the same today because we are used to use the chat. And when we have someone in front of us, we don't know how to speak many times. Yeah, it's more easy to express our feelings or, uh, with a face on a chat than saying something. So basically, throughout you know, the rehearsal process, the two months that we had um, was what led, led itself. Led, lended itself to when we got on, you know, in the set and we had to act, um, we pretty much had everything pretty well down pat, um, so we could do it in just one or two takes every scene. Um, can you guys talk about casting the babies? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the, the, the last kid is, uh, is, uh, is Laura's niece. Needs little girl? Uh, nephew. Oh, nephew. 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 Sorry. I apologize for my English. Um, how did you get your nephew to do what he Her did? sister hasn't forgiven her yet. <laughs> <laughs> the child is traumatized. But actually, the story is Ida in rehearsals, you know, the very first day, she, she had to rehearse with the child. And Laura said, you know, 
go ahead and scream, or I don't know what she said. And from that moment on, from the moment she screamed at the child, the child just could not stand Ida. She just started crying like crazy. We ran away. Together. They had to, every scene they had to shoot separate. And they would just start crying. Yeah, that Hansel and Gretel story, I mean, it worked perfect for that scene. They shoot the part of the baby of the kid one part, and then they told me what the kid did, and so I had to react in my imagination with that child. Oh. Okay, so my final question, and then I'm going to open it up to you guys. So start thinking about the questions you might have for them. Is also, can you talk a little bit about the production design? The design is so ethereal. It's fantastical. It's just exquisite, and I'd love to hear more about where it came from, how you got it all together. Well, um, it was very thought from the very script. You know? uh, we had in mind every, every little piece of, of prop on, on, on the, st in the, the walls, uh, the design of the walls, because through the light and through the production design, and even in the casting design, we wanted to make a journey, a journey from light to darkness. So every every single object had uh, to uh, had to had a purpose in that in that in that in that journey in that line. So we had very clear what was it was to be in 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 front. So when we made we made a lot of scouts to find a house where we could uh, shoot the movie, but we didn't find it. It was impossible because we had in mind very clear what, what we wanted to to. So we had to build everything. Everything you see on screen, every prop, every wall, ceiling, floor, everything was made for for the movie. It was it was painful, but worth it. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any questions for them? Uh, I noticed there was a second unit director of photography, but there wasn't necessarily a principal DP. Um, how did that come between you? Did you do that yourself? No, no, because uh, we, we shot in, in, in two weeks. This, this was a two weeks shooting. So what did we do? We had uh, a main unit with us that spent I don't know how many hours. And when we, uh, we went to sleep, these guys came in and shoot some other shots. That we, we explained very clearly, very specifically what we wanted, but we needed to sleep. So we had to go and let them um, and, and the next day we came in and, and saw the, the, the shootings that they made the, the, the three, days. Yeah, the days. Yes. The, 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 the day they did um, and say this was good, you have to repeat this, you have to repeat that, because we couldn't be there because you know, we needed to rest. Mm -hmm. Sí, que prácticamente la segunda unidad, sobre todo lo que se llevó muchas noches de, de viajes de cucarachas, recogiendo la... The, the, the cockroaches, and, you know, were, you didn't need an actor, um, they pretty much did all that type of stuff. And some of the letters, the letter box, the letters. Was there a DP for the primary unit, or did you do that yourself? Who no, no, the camera? There was the, uh, the, the DP. There were two DPs, there were uh, okay. the main unit and another one for the second unit. So there were three in all? No, no, just one for the main unit oh, and it. Wow. Got it, got it. the second unit. That's great. Uh, I saw another question back there. Yes. Uh, first of all, I loved the movie. It was brilliant. Uh, and uh, my actual question is, what was your favorite part of the movie to shoot? What was what your favorite, your favorite part of the movie to shoot? Our favorite part of the movie. Not the kid, not the coverage. <laughs> uh, it was painful, really, really painful. Uh, we all heard that saying, no, no, no kids and no yeah. animals. Uh, and we did. No cockroaches. Oh, I bet it, it, it was crazy. Uh, but the best part of the movie to shoot, which one should be? Mm. We, it, it was very painful shooting. We didn't, we, we didn't have many good times in this shooting. Oh, she, she recalls. El momento, improvisamos algunos momentos. Oh, yes. Hubo un momento en el que estábamos rodando una toma 
eh, Aida tenía al bebé en brazos y tenía que gritarle y cuando terminamos esa toma y dijimos es buena, le quitamos, sin, sin explicarle nada al equipo, le quitamos el bebé a Aida y ya entre ellos habían tramado que iban a seguir rodando y Aida se iba a poner como loca a bailar y nos dejaron a todos no, no uh, there was a part where the baby was was they, she was Ida had finished recording screaming at the baby and here I'm gonna let you explain yeah. it because you know yeah. <laughs> it was a part where I didn't have the baby in the arms it was a puppet I was screaming at it and uh, When we finished that part, he told me, without the other people knowing it, that I should improvise something. So I gave the baby away and I started dancing and the cameraman was like running behind me trying to do the shoot properly. And yeah, and we used that. It has been used quite a lot, that part. Yeah, all the dancing in the movie when they dance together or at the end, in, in the end, she's dancing like crazy. All those were in, in improvisations uh, on set. Yeah, we, we, we told them, do whatever you want and they dance. And one of these improvisations is the actual falling down of her from, from his shoulders. <laughs> she falls off uh, to the floor. That wasn't planned, actually. No, Ida, Ida does a lot of circus type acrobatic work as well um, but he didn't and I have never done any acrobatic work so she said okay, I was sitting down and she said Ken we're gonna improvise this we're gonna have a great time okay so she gets on top of my shoulders and says stand up okay let's stand up let's kind of dance a little bit and let's walk forward so I start walking forward well I noticed that she's she's gonna fall And so I do the exact opposite of what I should do. I grab her, her feet, you know, and I'm like, shit, she's gonna fall off. And so I should have let her go, let her jump off, but no, I grabbed even tighter, and there was a sofa right in front of us, and she went, bam, and she nailed her head on the sofa. Thank goodness it was the very last shot of the entire, you know, it kind of ruined the whole photo at the end and everything else, and well, let's go out for drinks, but, um, but it was a great shot. And the, it's funny, the editor actually, for the film, said, this is fantastic, this is great, this is so going in the movie, so it worked out well. After the shoot, after the shot, we wanted to make the, the, the picture of the, of the crew, of the whole crew. We don't have that picture, because after that, we were all worried about her, her about her her knees and what happened to her because the, 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 we, we got very scared as you can imagine. No one expected that. Sir. My question was actually just about second. Oh, hold on one second, oh. then I'll be back to you. Yeah, yeah. A couple of things. One, um, I thought the movie was extraordinary and very powerful, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Psychiatrically powerful mm -hmm. in yeah. terms of trying to understand the unconscious meanings of it. But um, two questions I have. One is, what were your major influences? What came to my mind was Charlie Chaplin, Ingemar Bergman. Um, and also, I wanted to ask you, what kind of statement were you trying to make about families and parenting? Because technically, <laughs> technically, I think if you showed this to mental health professionals, they might say, suggest that this couple was insane. <laughs> and uh, I don't know whether that was your intention to say families are crazy or whether this just happened and you didn't even, weren't even aware of what you were portraying. So I know I've asked a lot, but I'd really like to hear it. Okay. Well, about this statement, the last question, I, I don't really like to talk about it because uh, my, the, the point is that the movie explains Itself. You know, if, if you don't get the joke, if, if the joke doesn't work, it's not going to work if I explain the joke. No, you know, it's funny because you ruin it even more. But so the point is the movie to explain itself about the statement. Um, because I like also that uh, every, every person in the audience uh, find their own ways, and their own explanations and statements. Um, about influences, uh, they can talk about it. But in my case, I'm 
very big fan of Kafka. And uh, actually, um, this one I, I could say, uh, uh, I can say, um, this is kind of a twist adaptation of metamorphosis yeah. in Kafka. Actually, there are, uh, there are uh, literal dialogues from the book. Um, some of you may have seen it, may have not. Um, that was the main influence. Of course, there's uh, silent movies influences on some others, but to me, as a writer, that, that's, that's the, the main influence. Not in this movie, but in almost everything I, I do. I, I let them speak about the influence in the world. Yeah, about Charlie Chaplin, it's funny. It, I didn't. I wasn't conscious that I was using a lot of Charlie Chaplin's movements, but it's because I grew up without a television when I was little, and the only movies I saw were from Charlie Chaplin. So it's something oh really deep inside myself. <laughs> I didn't really wake up. We just eh, utilizamos diferentes eh, inspiraciones, digamos, para poder expresarle al equipo lo que nosotros teníamos en la cabeza. We use different methods to try and explain to the, the technical team um, what we wanted to, to explain. Visualmente eh, trabajamos con fotografía, sobre todo de, de Jan Sudeck y Mar they, they, visually speaking, they want to use John Sudek and who was the other one? Max Sauco. And Max Sauco. They told us actually, which what I actually watched and used was the film uh, Delicatessen from John Paul, John Pierre Junet. Who he did Am Amalie as well. Brazil de Terry Gilliam. And we a lot of other influences. They they showed us a lot a couple other movies they had on a list for us to see. No, that's what I honestly there's a there's actually a scene in Delicatessen which is kind of similar to the very first scene when I enter in the room um, and she gives me the food right at the beginning and it's from Delicatessa, there's a, there's a uh, similar scene which kind of gave me just the kind of, uh, of the reference that I kind of needed just to, to know what to base my care, how to base my care. Quizás en concreto y para la realización, sí que nos inspiramos en un director que cada vez que hablamos Hay gente que sí que vea Jean-Pierre Junet o ve o tal, pero en la realización igual nos guiamos un poco más por Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Ah. M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan is who they... Oh, where are you? No, she's very good. There you go. Fantastic, young lady. Oh, uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations. I thought it was fantastic on every level, writing, script, mm -hmm. set design, costumes, acting, everything. Uh, I have two questions. Actually, it's one question in two phases. Why did you decide to make this movie in English? And because it was in English, how exactly your process of editing work together since you don't speak English? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> it was hard. Uh, well, uh, I was writing the script uh, in Spanish at the beginning, but when we have uh, half the script or so, we found out that it couldn't be in Spanish. It didn't make sense because the story is not set in Spain. It's not set anywhere, and we want it to be anywhere. It, the, the, we wanted. Uh, we, we didn't want to be a specific. Actually, they don't have a name because we didn't want to be a specific. About, if you if you name them name name him Peter or Hans or Antonio, Antonio we, we we say where they are from or or, or the whereabouts. And we didn't. Uh, that's why there's a lot of details. Uh, the food is named food. Uh, <laughs> there is no place. Uh, I mean, so it's. Uh, as universal as it can be. And let's face it, 
the loving of our days is English. So we found out that the best language for this movie would be English. So we decided to, to, to do it in English. Then came <laughs> the hard part that was to make it in English. To find the actors, that was very hard. And, um, and then to, to, to edit and to drag and to do everything. Well, even if uh, English is not my first language, um, she, actually, she doesn't speak English, but she understands. You know? But she doesn't speak because, well, she doesn't. She's actually our acting coach more, yeah. than, <laughs> more than Jose even, so. But, but she understands very well English. She, she, she hears what, what they were saying. When she heard what, what they were saying, she understood perfectly what it was about, and she could direct very well. Um, and the same for myself. The problem comes when you have to put in words what you have in mind. Sí, básicamente, además, eh, igual que el personaje de, de ella, eh, yo también tengo serios traumas. Y eh, uno de ellos eh, me prohíbe, me, me, me impide hablar en, en inglés. Desde pequeña tuve un profesor que cada vez que intentaba decir algo en inglés se reía de nosotros y de, se me quedó ese trauma y ahora soy incapaz de, de decir ninguna palabra, ninguna palabra en público. Just like Ida has traumas from her childhood when she was in the movie, um, Laura had a, a trauma as well trying to speak English when she was little. <laughs> she had a professor that every time she tried to speak English would actually laugh. Anyone in the class, she would, they would laugh at, at anyone who tried to speak English in the class. Um, and so from that time on, she, she's had this fear of, of trying to speak English. So. <laughs> Um, let me just see. Right here. Yeah, I know. I've got, I've got it. I'm balancing. I'm balancing. <laughs> I get it. In the blue. Yes. I'm just, you mentioned budget constraints. I'm just wondering, were you working, uh, your financing of this movie, was it like private capital or were you dealing with grant money or government money? It's all private capital. It's all pocket money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hola, buenas noches. Quería simplemente agradecerles la invitación. He disfrutado muchísimo con la película. Creo que ya alguien lo comentó antes. Todos los departamentos están fantásticos. Especialmente la textura de la película, del film, es bastante acogedor, íntimo. No sé, me gustó muchísimo el vestuario, en fin, todo, la dirección. Y ahora la pregunta está para va para los directores, que son los directores. ¿Cuánta la De hecho, escuché que el guión solo tenía 30 páginas, ¿verdad? Uh, 47, 47 páginas. Eh, 47 páginas, bueno, pues si dura una hora y media, imagínate todo el tiempo que hay para poder ahí trabajar como actor. Esa es la pregunta. Como directores, ¿cuánta latitud le dieron a los actores para ellos poder recrearse y poder de alguna manera interpretar ese papel? ¿Qué es la gist de la pregunta? Así, la gist de la pregunta, Ken's going to tell us about it right now. Um, he said how much direction went into the acting you know it was 47 pages of the script um how how did you direct the actors basically was the question correct yeah. <laughs> no well, well no. not not exactly, no, no, exactly. exactly. Uh, the, the script was uh 47 pages long so how did we make it to uh an hour a, a, a whole film yeah. a whole feature film mm -hmm. with a 47 uh, pages script um, in rehearsals, uh, the improvisation in, in rehearsals. Porque sabíamos que a la hora de rodar teníamos tan poquísimo tiempo que las cosas tenían que ir muy preparadas. Entonces nos dimos tiempo en los ensayos para que con Aida y con Ken surgiesen muchas cosas y, y lleváramos todas las escenas preparadas. Allí jugamos mucho, pero una vez que cerramos los ensayos en el set íbamos con las cosas muy preparadas y ya había menos margen para improvisar. We played a lot in the re rehearsals um, and tried a lot of different things, but uh, we we created some concrete ideas so that when we had to start recording, we knew exactly where we were going um, in each scene. And actually, Ortuño with his iPhone recorded a lot of 
I mean, I'm sure he could probably create the movie on his iPhone with all the different rehearsals, a lot of different scenes that we actually did, because we actually used Ida's house, and we tried to create as close to what it was going to end up being, um, even though it, the set is nothing like Ida's house. But, um, but it helped a lot in the rehearsal process. So the scenes were explained how they were going, and we started playing, and what worked, we repeated it, and after rehearsals, I wrote everything down and practiced it once and twice and so on. And actually, we rehearsed kind of differently because she had these concrete things to do, and they actually told me to stop rehearsing at a certain point because um, they kind of wanted me to, to improvise a little bit more and not exactly know exactly what Ida was going to do, so it would be a little bit fresher. Um, in certain scenes. The styles of acting uh, of, the, of them, uh, they're very different from Ken to, to Ida. They act in very different styles. So the, the rehearsals were the same, very different from for each. For her, it was very specific. She, she had to write down every action. Everything she did was to be clear and, and specific. With him, not at all. We, we, there, are, there were scenes that he didn't uh, rehearse at all. So he, he could improvise more. Um, and I, I think you can see that in the, in the movie. Yes. Yes. La de Lucy sí. en sí, uh, The Actress, Lucía Ball. Sí. En el programa de Ilo Lucia. Ah. Esa es locura de ella y esa me la recordó muchísimo. Que por cierto, ella fue una, una actriz famosísima. No sé, pero aquí muy grande. <coughs> y la otra pregunta. Ah, perdón. Y me he divertido mucho siempre con los programas de ella. Los veo y los repito, los repito, me arrebatan. Eh, y esta niñita lo presenta muy, muy igualito a, la, a los movimientos y a la, la risa de todo, igual que lo siempre. Y el otro, la pregunta que tengo es, ¿por qué tuvieron tan poco tiempo? Después de tanto ensayo, ¿por, por qué decidieron tan poco tiempo? No, oh, she brought it up. The microphone. Um, she said she reminded her a lot of Lucille Ball and I Love Lucy. Um, and, you know, she was inspired by Lucille Ball in, in any way. Um, and, you know, Lucille Ball, she says, is an actress. She, uh, she loves her. She thinks she's a fantastic actress. And, um, and she had a lot of the same, the way she smiled, the way she danced, the way she, some of her movements was, reminded her a lot of Lucille Ball. Um, and then she asked if, while there was so there was so much rehearsal, um, why was there so little time to actually record the movie? Was her question? Very simple. We didn't have money to mm -hmm. shoot for for much longer. We could renting the studio, renting the camera, renting everything, the personnel, the actors, the, everything just cost money. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have a question over here, Jordy. Uh, absolutely. Yep. Well, I, just, I was curious about um, the post production process. Like, I know you guys talked a little bit about how it's tricky, you know. Um, coming to consensus on how you want to shut certain things. So just how long did that take? And then also I did, my second part of the question was the influence and the decision to use the snow during, or, or what looked like some sort yeah. of snow to me, I wasn't sure. But well, it's, it's a symbol. Uh, that's that what you, what you call snow, but it's not actually snow, it's snow. Uh, almost every every person sees something different in, in, in the scene. Uh, it, it was actually some kind of test. Um, but it's a symbol. That the movie is, is full of symbols. And in this case, uh, when they get to the top of the heavens, this snow appears. You know, you, you see the snow when they get married, when they make love for the first time, and when the darkness uh, comes to the house, the snow disappears, and it appears later on when happiness gets back 
to the house. So it's a symbol for, for, for this happiness, uh, the top of the, of the happiness. When she is as happy as she can be, this snow appears. It's a visual symbol. And the other question was? I was curious about, um, you know, considering that you didn't have that much time to film, one, two, three takes maybe at most, what yeah. the editing process, you know, how time consuming that was, what that was like, and also to make sure things read as you wanted and kind of get feedback on it. First of all, we have we have a great editor, uh, Carlos Crespo. Yes, he's great, and he was uh, present in the in the shooting. Actually, he was the script supervisor in, during the, the the shooting, and he was editing during the shooting when we shot the when we had the shots. We gave it to him on the day uh, the day after he showed us the, the scene already edited. So we could uh, see what what we were doing. So it was it, it was fast. It was a very very quick process of post production because most of the work was done uh, was done, and he, he he was involved in the production from the from almost from 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 the script. So he had very clear what, what he had to do. Well, there's actually a, a little story that Artunio told me a couple months ago, actually saying that. Um, there was one scene that they shot, and he wasn't exactly sure if it would work or not. Um, and so the next day, he came in, you know, to the stage, and he actually asked Carlos and another editor, "He said, do you guys mind just putting it together real quickly?" Uh, and it only took him like 20 minutes to put it together. He saw uh, how the scene worked, and he said, "No, it's not going to work." And so we actually we had to repeat uh, the scene again because we we could see in in the actual shooting how. How it was edited. So even though I mean they, they're both they're, they're Carlos Crespo is fantastic and really quick. Um, and granted, it just it took him a few months to to get to get things down to detail. But while we were shooting it, we could pretty much see how the movie was kind of coming together, which was kind of cool. Y además también en el guión tenemos la en muchos momentos de montaje de la película. Todos los encadenados que hay de la chica que se echa hacia atrás en la cama y ahora aparece hacia adelante en el plato o que tira la cabeza con el agua o todo eso ya estaba descrito en el guión y simplemente comprobábamos durante el rodaje que funcionaran esos enlaces, pero ya estaba todo bastante cerrado. No, there are certain moments where she, she falls into the plate and then it goes into another scene, or maybe she falls into bed, and then it quickly it goes into another completely different scene. Um, and a lot of those transitions, it, they were thought of ahead of time, um, and it just they just had to put it together a lot of times during the actual recording. They, they tested it out to make sure that um, those different transitions would, would work out cleanly. In short, we spent uh, a lot of time, years and months, writing the script and rehearsing with the actors, so uh, the, sh the actual shooting and post-production was uh, much easier um, and quick. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an amazing evening and it's really exciting to see how long this could keep going. I think so many of you guys could keep asking questions. So what I'm gonna do is, I, I know, sir, I'm gonna invite you to ask the question after I wrap up. Um, and the reason being that we actually would like to invite all of you guys to come join us down the street at the Eclectic Bar. It's a wine and grill. You can come, you can get sodas, you can get cocktails, whatever you like. Um, but I'd like to continue this conversation. Film Festival Flicks is nothing without you. You, the audience, is the reason that we make independent film and the reason that Film Festival Flicks can distribute independent film. Without you, these films will not get seen. And that means get the word out about this film. Tweet about it, Facebook about it, put the word out on everything you can on social media. We will be having its actual release coming up in September. You are some of the first to see it in the States. So you are our test audience. So tell everybody about it so this exquisite work can go further and beyond all of our hopes and dreams. Because really, you are our legwork and you are our champions and 
please come visit us at filmfestivalflix.com. We have a whole slew of films that you can download, you can stream. The other thing that we do is we are supporters of up and coming filmmakers. So every single month we do a short film competition. And the winner every single month receives $250 plus an entrance into the grand prize, which is going to be in November. In the November screenings, you're gonna see all 10 films that have won, and you, the audience, will decide who walks home with $2,500. So go online, you can vote every month for the best films, but in the meantime, please join us over at The Eclectic. Our fantastic team will be there so you can continue this conversation. At Film Festival Flicks, we think independently and we invite you to join the conversation. Thank you so much and thank you to you.